Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to be building even more complex responsive sites where we're going to be changing our grid based on different breakpoints. Now, if you remember in the last video, we had our basic grid that just starts um, with one container and moves to two here. Well, that's awesome, that's great. Now, let's say this layout's working for us. However, when we get this wide, this sidebar is a little too wide. Also, we'd really like if these three paragraphs went into three columns. So let's go ahead and pick a width at which that will happen. So let's say at 1200 pixels, we want this side content to actually go smaller. We want uh, each of these paragraphs to be in its own. We want each of these paragraphs to be in its own column, and we want our grid to now be 24 columns. Well, that's really attainable and easy using Breakpoint and Suzy. So we can write a new breakpoint here, and it's just at include breakpoint and then 1200 pixels. Okay, now we could have it say inside of here, we're going to do add include. And if you remember, we used the layout mix in before so we can type in layout. And then all we have to pass it here is 24. So this is effectively changing our grid from a 12 column grid to a 24 column grid. Uh, now, what happens if we refresh our page, and let's make sure this is 1200, which it's not, but now it is, you'll notice that nothing changed. And you might be wondering why we told this to be 24 columns. Well, in, in other grid systems, when you have something that has that many columns, uh, it's that many columns all the time, or it's changing based on uh, the size of the grid. However, with something like this, your divs and your content basically that you're assigning positions and widths to, they're not being told to update until you pass it in some data, right? So even though you're changing the grid to 24, your CSS or your SAS code is never ever telling these columns to go onto the new grid. So you'll notice that the instant that we put these mixins or these uh this code here that we used before just adding span of eight and span four at nine here the layout's going to be wrong but they're now going to snap to this new grid and in fact when we go here you can see it, the change happen right there so now we just want to get these three paragraphs in their own one and so to do that there's an even division of seven that means uh, this one is going to have to be, it's going to have to span, main is going to span 21 columns uh, to en encapsulate all three of those, those uh, columns inside of it. And the aside is going to have to be starting at 21 and going three columns wide. Um, so that goes from uh, 21 to 24. So it's starting at the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Okay, so now we need to add some classes to our HTML. And we can just say class call one. And I'll just add these classes here. Call two. And call three. There we go. And inside of our main here, we can just say dot call one, comma dot call two, comma dot call three. And now you might be thinking, okay, uh, we have a 24 total columns. The aside is taking up three, therefore each of these should be taking up seven. And our grid here is going to be based off of percentages. However, it's percentages of the container. So if we were to say at include span of seven because three times seven equals 21 plus three equals 24. And I refresh, you'll see that these don't quite line up. That's because it's actually doing seven out of 24. It's treating this main as a container and saying, hey, uh, you have three more columns left to use within here. So to get this to fill up, we're going to be saying span of eight. 
save that and we can refresh there we go and now we have our three columns just like that now another way of writing this we could have said it is going to be one of three now if we refresh and you see when we refresh that we actually have three columns here although the uh the padding is a bit different right the the gutters are more spread out and that's because we have our gutter set to one fourth and that's one fourth of the column width so when we have three wide columns we have uh wider gutters so if we wanted to reduce the size of the gutters we could always just say two of six and this is, would cut the size of the gutters in half and that looks a little bit better and of course if you wanted to reduce that again we could always just keep doubling this so now we could say 4 of 12 and eventually of course we're going to be back to where we were but now we refresh and of course we have our uh, three columns here so that's an important thing to note is that it's always going to be filling up the parent size right it's not necessarily going to be uh, of the the total columns but if it makes more sense to you uh, if you're going to be having a sub column structure here then you can always just define your columns directly into the span so now we have three layouts, right? We have this big layout, we have a two column layout, and then we have a one column layout. So two and then four. And this four column has a substructure here. So what you've seen now is how to completely change and manipulate your grid based off of breakpoints, right? All we simply did was add a layout 24 and it changed this to 24 columns and again all we had to say is of 12 down here and it was able to put these in a column of 12. It's just really doing the math for you and there's uh, it's not like a normal grid system that has a class that already has predefined widths attached to it. It actually takes and calculates the math and gives you percentages back. Uh, that way everything uh, works out and you don't have to have a lot of CSS overhead. With a normal grid system, you'd be working with just a whole CSS file. Here, it pretty much only adds what you need it. So you can see our entire CSS for this site already is only 81 lines which is awesome so you can see certainly see the power of Susie and breakpoint now keep in mind this uh, one thing that could be great to do with breakpoint is to set all of your widths and uh, your breakpoints into variables so you could say something like uh, small is going to be 400 pixels or some m value right uh, medium is going to be 700 pixels or some M value and then uh, large can be like 960 or something and then desktop can be even wider but that way you can simply say alright I want this breakpoint to take place here instead of at the 12 so you can see um, Let's see if it even got that. There we go. Um, now it's taking place at 960. What this does is it really just has you to have a large, a lot more control over uh, your variables. You want to change it. You just have to change it up here because I guarantee you're not just going to be wrapping everything in your breakpoints. You can use this breakpoint mixin inside of things, right? So what we could do is we could say breakpoint inside of here and uh, and again, we could do this exact same thing inside of the aside. Just like this. Now let me delete this extra bracket and fix our alignment. And this is equivalent to what we had typed before. So this is really cool because now you can just sort of throw in breakpoints whenever you need them. However, in the case where you wanted to change this, you would then have to go find it everywhere you declared it. But now we can just say medium and medium and you would only have to change this in one place. So that's a, a nice part about using 
variables for your breakpoints. Now, there's still more to talk about using breakpoint. However, in the next video, I'm gonna talk about the breakpoint and Suzy integration. They call it the Suzy um, toolkit. It's the Suzy breakpoint toolkit. So it, it allows for some integrated use into Breakpoint. So that's cool, we're gonna go over that next time. And so in the meantime, keep checking it out, keep trying new things, use Breakpoint, check out their documentation, just experiment with it. It's a great new system. It allows for some really interesting uh, ways of writing your CSS, full control, and you're obviously using less lines than if you were loading up a full grid system. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook, uh, pretty much anywhere. Let us know what you wanna hear or see. Also, if you feel like contributing, sign up for Level Up Pro. You get uh, some new features, like you can download videos from us, and it's uh, $8.99 a month or $95 for the year. It just goes to support and help make Level Up Tuts even better. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, bye.